What's up, gearheads? It's Toby with GearReport.com. Today, we've got something fun for you. Uli at Inner Ordnance sent us a XB Bullpup shotgun to review. That's exciting. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pop the box open, kind of give you an idea of what's in it. But more importantly, we're going to try to do a field strip because as soon as I got this thing, you know, I wanted to take it apart, see if I uh, see if I could get it lubed up, get it ready to, to do the review and get started working on it immediately. And I found out that there is nobody out there who's got any videos that are very helpful to me. So I'm going to try to walk through the, the uh, instruction manual with you here today. I'm going to try not to mess it up too bad. I'm going to give you an idea of what you're looking at and how to field strip this thing and get it cleaned. And maybe we won't mess this up too bad for you. So stay tuned. Okay, gearheads. So here's what we've got when you open up the box. Let's take a quick look and a talk through of a couple of points here. So we're going to look at the contents, but the first thing I wanted to point out on this is the foam. I know, I know that sounds a little weird, but when you pop the box open, you've got a foam cover sheet and you've got what effectively is, is fitted, a fitted foam insert. Okay. So what's the big deal about that? Well, here's the big deal about that. If by chance, now don't get me wrong, this isn't super rugged or super sturdy. Okay, this isn't the strongest foam I've ever seen in my life. And it's certainly not pluckable, but but who cares? This is, a, a, right out of the gates, is a um, kind of a bonus, a bonus for me. And the reason I say that is because I'm going to plan on taking, um, getting a hard plastic case and pulling this foam out and putting that in that hard plastic case and going ahead and giving this thing more of a protected permanent home once I get everything going. So... That's just kind of a nice touch. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not required by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely a nice little bonus. So let's go ahead and get you a couple, some measurements here and get you an idea of what we're looking at as far as the size. So we've got in inches, we've got 35 and a quarter from one side to the other. And then we've got 13 and it's about 13 and a half by what I say. Thirteen and a half by thirty-five and a quarter. Okay, so if you can find a uh, a hard case uh, like maybe some of the Plano Tactical or Pelican case or something that's got roughly that inner dimension, inner dimension size, not outer dimension, this should fit. Okay, so what we get straight out of the box with the firearm is, of course, the firearm itself. So you get the XB Bullpup Inner Ordnance Shotgun imported from Crowl Arms, and, and forgive me for slaughtering this, but it's a Zumlu Turkey, model XB 12 gauge. Uh, you'll notice it's got a chamber flag already in it. It's a nice little chamber flag. Um, maybe I can give you a quick idea of what that looks like. Because the way the chamber flag is designed, it actually, so I'm gonna try to keep up with it, it's where I'm going with that. Let's hit that bolt hold open. The way it's designed, I don't know if I can get this on the camera or not, yeah, I think I can probably get it in there. There's a little slot right there. See that little slot? So that's a nice little touch. That chamber flag fits right up in that slot. Look at that. You got a little plastic, uh, like a rubber safety mushy cover to go over the charging handle. That's a nice touch. Um, I'll try to keep track of that. But you know how that goes once you get out shooting a gun and you start running it around and, and uh, what ends up happening. So we'll see if that lasts. But at any rate, so you got the shotgun itself. It comes with a gas uh, adjustment block or gas block adjustment tool uh, and some, some hex wrenches. Okay, I'm going to pull that out and put it into, as a matter of fact, let's just lay that to the side right now. Into the, and, and notice again that the, the foam's already cut to shape. So if you wanted a, a thumb spot for the, the choke tube box that comes with it, already cut to shape for that. But uh, it comes with some extra choke tubes. So that's a, a good little bonus. If I can get it to open. So the choke tube case itself has all the different choke styles in it. Okay. It comes with five different chokes. And we're gonna do we're gonna try to get some some shots of us patterning those to see what they to see how they, they hit. Um, a choke a choke tool with the universal style tip to where it's got all the different ones with one tool. Hard plastic side case. Um, 
This, I'm going to set aside for a second. That'll matter here in a minute. Um, and, and I wanted to, you to notice that the, the case for the choke tubes is fitted. So each one of them has a little slot that it fits in. You have to actually pull it. Yeah, exactly. See how hard it is for me to pull that out? They're fitted down in there. That's a nice little touch. So basically what I'll do is I'll keep everything all in one little case, including that, that gas block adjustment tool. I'll just put it all in this one little case and keep it all right in the, the foam spot for it, a little natural spot for it right over there on the foam. Nice touch. So what this is, is a side adjustment tool, like similar to an AR-15 side adjustment tool. And the reason for that is because out of the box, it comes with two flip up, Sights, AR style sights, um, rear notch and post. Uh, the sight itself has, as you can see, got your standard distance flip to where you can do the full open for close in, the closed for further out. And then of course your front sight post has, you know, standard adjustment, which is where the tool comes in handy. Okay. Uh, it comes with an angled forward grip that goes on the Picatinny rail that's already included with the, the shotgun, but you've got an, a grip included. Um, it's just a good solid plastic, good solid hard plastic. It comes with an, uh, a carry handle style top with the front sight post already included on that. Okay, and also the rear aperture as well. with your standard adjustments for windage and elevation here on the rear. So you got left, right, up, down. All right, so what else does it come with? It comes with a, a cleaning kit, which is just kind of nice. It's a, a good touch. Not required by any stretch of the imagination, but, but it's, a, it's a really good touch. So you've got, you've got the um, standard thick, hard bristle brush. You've got a medium bristle brush for the fine, for fine, or for a second layer or a second pass through. You've got a, a sock, and then you've got a standard push-pull rod with a patch, patch tip, okay? So that come with it right out of the box. And then of course it comes with two five round magazines. Again, they fit neatly in their own little spot in the phone, but two five-round magazines. The, so from what I'm reading, they do accept Saiga style 12 magazines. Now, I don't know if that's completely true or completely accurate. I have some on order that are coming in, so we are going to be testing that during our review to see if it does in fact take, I've ordered a couple 10 rounds, uh, SRM I think is the brand, and uh, ProMag. I've ordered one of each so that we can give you an overview of how those are gonna, how those are gonna run this thing, or will they or will they not run in it? Along with, of course, you know the the factory mags. So, without further ado, let's uh, let's jump into trying to um, let's jump into trying to uh, break this thing down, and field strip it, and see if it needs any lubrication before you even fire the first shot. Okay, so as you've noted, or as I've mentioned. There is nothing on the internet about how to how to, to clean this thing or break it down. So I'm going to have to, to break the man rule, and I'm going to have to check the manual out and read the manual. I'm going to read the Inner Ordnance XB Bullpup AK-47 Semi-Automatic Kin. Autom automatic Kin? Automacation? Automation? I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. I don't know. Instruction. Because Merca. Instruction manual. Instruction safety manual, America instructions. Okay, so uh, yeah, gun safety rules, blah blah blah. Uh, the general informations. All right, here we go. So we get to the loading, unloading your shotgun, operation of it, and the only thing from a field strip perspective that you got is this instruction book here. So we're gonna be we're gonna try to do it off of one page, page six of instructions. And we're going to try to do this with just the Leatherman that I carry in my pocket every day. All right, so first thing it says is remove the recoil pad. So let's do that. Let's take these two little safety, safety sally parts out real quick. All right, 
remove the recoil pad. And it looks, it shows that it's just lifting off. So let's just lift that off and see what happens. Oh, look at that. Popped right off. Okay. Out of the way. Now, remove the screw under the recoil pad. That would be this, I assume. And that is a, oh my goodness, that's an Allen wrench. Well, so much for my plan to use the, I guess I better use the included tools they sent. Who'd have thunk it? They thought this through and uh, sent you what you needed ahead of time. Who'd have thunk it? The really long one. So you got the really long one there. No sizes written on it. And then you got two shorties. Just a really long one. So let's just remove that. So I'm definitely going to have to add that somehow into the to the foam into the case. Apparently, all right. Set that somewhere where we won't lose it. All right. Remove the flank elevator piece. That would be this little bad boy. And the picture shows you just unscrewing this all the way. It's just a male thumb screw style. And you can see the notches in the groove there. So let's see if this just pulls up now like you like it's pictured. Yep, there it went. So it looks like there's a metal insert. That's a nice touch. There's a metal insert inside the, the plastic cheek rest there, the cheek rise. That's a nice little touch. That'll help make it last longer. All right, next step is to remove the ring, remove the ring on the front sling with a screwdriver. Remove the ring on the front sling with a screwdriver. What does that even mean? So the picture doesn't really show, but it shows the guy's hand closer to this point right here. Remove the ring on the front sling with a screwdriver. So the ring on the front sling to me is this. But this is where his hand is closer. So I'm not sure which one to remove. Let's look on the instructions if you have to remove that stuff later. Move the pin by pulling from one side. So I'm gonna go with that's what they're wanting us to unscrew. Yep, I don't know. That's what we're going with. If I mess it up, I'll put it back together or call in an ordinance to repair or to, to talk me through what I've done wrong. Don't tell them. If I mess this up, don't tell them. It's just between me and you, okay? It's our secret. So we're gonna pop that off. We're gonna pop the one off on the other side. Try not to lose those. All right, now, we're gonna pretend that was what we were supposed to remove and see what happens, all right? Remove the pin by pulling from the other side. There's no pin, so I don't think that was the right thing, but we're gonna go ahead and get ahead of ourselves and take this back cover here off, the back cover screws and see if that's, because that's one of the steps a little here in a bit. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Again, just the Allen wrench with the big long Allen wrench as all these, these four have been. Now remember guys, I literally just opened the box on this thing so I don't even know what the heck I'm doing here. I'm just winging it. All right, so there is something holding it. Let's take these out and see what happens. Oh, ho, 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 looky there. Okay, so I skipped a step. Whatever that pin removal was, I've skipped that step for now, but I've got the top off. And what I had to do to get the top off was I had to remove all six screws. So I had one, two, three, and those were Allen wrenches. That was that big, tall, long Allen wrench. One, two, three, okay? 
those are off, which means again, your optics going to be on top of this thing and it's going to be, it's going to stay zeroed out where it's at because it's all one solid piece. And this is not a divider. Although it looks like it for aesthetics, that is not a divider. It's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. Okay. Also notice that there's a couple rails here where you could add M-Lock style Picatinny if you wanted to. All right, so I am not seeing, not seeing that pin they were talking about, but I do see now that you can remove these these little Picatinny rails here and the ones down in the bottom with the Allen wrench from the inside. If you wanted to take these off, these three, they're from the inside, looks like. All right, so from here, it's pretty much just like any standard AK-47 uh, disassembly and oil job for the most part. I mean, for the most part. It is a shotgun, but it is AK-47 style. So there's a little detent, uh, spring-loaded pin right here that might give you a wee bit of problem that you have to hold down and press in to take off the top cover. Unlike some others where it's just the, the cover, cover retention overall. Uh, this one's a little, the, I don't know if it's the coating or if it's the, uh, or if it's just the newness of it or what, but this one's a little, little moody and popping off. So I'm going to use a tool to pry that up. Again, it's just your standard cover with the groove that it goes in there. And then we're going to pull out the spring. The spring does come in two parts. It is a two piece spring. We can lay that down without dropping it. Okay, the cover, and again, there's that little spring-loaded catch that I was talking about there that was kind of in my way a wee bit. And it's just a matter of pulling the bolt, the bolt carrier out, just like you would any other AK-47 style. Lubricated according to your, to your likings, and then put it all back together. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole lubrication thing because there's... 5,000 different ways you can debate this one between motor oil and lithium grease and CLP and how much is too much. You know, in this case, it actually looks like there's quite a bit on there. So I'm probably just going to run this thing right out of the box, just like it is, and start reviewing it right out of the box. See if I can, uh, see how much I can tear it up for you guys. See if I can get it to do some fun magic stuff. So then re re reassembly is just the reverse. Basically, just like any other AK-47 style. Make sure you put everything back in right. Fighting with your dust cover, you know how it all goes. Everybody knows how this all, this magic stuff goes. So none of this is none of this is new. There's a thousand videos out there on the interwebs for you on this, but this is basically the breakdown of it. Now, this does get to be a pain in the rear, as 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 with every other dust cover. You now also have the element of the the little spring that you got to press to get that to go in. So gravity is your friend. There you go. So that thing ends up being, you know, both a blessing and a curse because it's in your way. So we'll function test it. Real, we'll function function test it real quick. Okay, looks like we got it all all back together. You know, put the the cover back on. Bolt it back into the to the bolt points. You got the one, one, two, three bolt points, and then everything should be back together without any any major issues. Everything everything looks pretty good. Um, I'm not going to field strip it any further down than what what I just did for that video uh, because I don't see any need to. This thing is brand new, and uh, there are a ton of videos out there on how to do how to do AK-47 style cleaning. So I don't want to over, I don't want to overthink it or overdo it. Um, do want to point out the tube there for reference because I have a feeling that's going to come into play for us. Gas block, gas tube. I got a feeling that's going to come into play for us with some of the different types of ammo that we run through this thing. So just want to point that out. I'll put this all back together. 
and we'll start giving it a run for its money and then we'll come back in uh, after we've given it a comprehensive review a good run for its money we'll come back and tell you what we thought about it what the good and the bad is and the ugly so till we see you on the range gearheads you keep living your dream